Now let's understand subnetting and supernetting in a little more details. But before understanding subnetting and supernetting, first of all, let's create a simple IP address allocation table which is assigned to this private network too. For that, let's create a simple table. Let me just drag it down and let's assign the IP addresses. So here I'm going to use the machine name let's say and here we will keep up the IP allocation. Simple. So let's say for the user 1 the assigned IP address is somewhere in class C 192.168.128.20 for this user 2 the IP address will be 192.168.128.21 and for the user 3 the IP address would be 192.168.128 and 22 now one more thing before that let me just add another row here done whenever you assign an ip address to a network which is done by the router itself we know router assign the ip addresses right before assigning any ip to any machine in the network router first of all always keep an ip address for itself so the first ip will always be assigned to the router and the first ip within the range is known for the router so 192.168.128.1 would be used by the router for the gateway which is known as default gateway the use of default gateway is pretty simple if you want to send any packet outside the network the machine has to send it to this particular gateway to pass any traffic outside or within the network as well right you just have to pass it to the this router default gateway one more ip address is always in use and that is broadcast address which is again used by the router and that would always be the last ip address of the range 192.168.128.255 which is known as the broadcast address let me just extend this one done no worries okay we can see one thing here the initial three octets for all the ip addresses even for the router even for the users are same for all the machines in the network and the it initial three bytes depending on the class that you are using the same part for all the machine let's say if we are using the class a the initial octet do you can say the first octet will always be same and that same part usually referred as network address so in case of class a the first octet will always remain the same so the first octet will be known as the network address and the rest three octet would be known as the host range or host address let me just keep it as host address simple the same follows for class b in which two octets the first two octets would remain the same and that would be known as the network address then the last two you can say the third or fourth octet would be known as the host address the same will goes for the class c as well in case of class c first three octet would be known as would remain same and they would be known as the network address 
and the last or you can say the fourth octet would be known as the host address now this is the core fundamental of the subnetting and supernetting how your network address and what is your network address and what is your host address or you can say the host range which is available to you right and based on these two values network address and host address you perform subnetting and supernetting right now what is supernetting if you talk about the subnetting part supernetting part let me just give a simple definition first so subnetting is the process of consuming the ip you can say the host ip addresses in an effective way this is a pretty simple definition for the subnetting subnetting is the process through which we consume host ip address in an effective way so that none of the host address is lost right so we don't want to consume too much of host addresses in a network so if we talk about the public network the subnetting and supernetting is more widely used for a large organizations for an country level you can say right for a level of country for level of rir for level of iana for lar or large organizations we usually prefer doing subnetting where the number of ip addresses is limited and we have to also align all those ip addresses in an effective manner so when you don't want to lose your ip addresses you perform the subnetting now the second thing is supernetting supernetting is just the opposite part of the subnetting in subnetting you divide you use those ip addresses in an effective manner but in case of subnetting you simply merge the ip tables for different networks into one for effective routing suppose let's say you have two or three different networks right for which you have a single ip address now instead of creating different routing table like arp or the cam table or other few routing tables instead of creating multiple tables for each network you will create a single routing table and for that we perform the supernetting if we give you simple more examples for subnetting supernetting as well so in case of subnetting let me simply taking example of class a in case of class a we have the first octet for the network like network then we have the host then again we have the host then again we have the host in case of class b we have the network then again we have network then again we have host then again we have host same goes for class c we have network then again we have network then again we have network then the last one is the host now one thing to keep in mind in case of class a where we have three octets for the host so maximum number of host that can be added in one network is 2 raised to the power 24 in case of class a you can add these many host in a single network you can add around 1.67 million host in a network simple other than this if we talk about the class b you can add 2 raised to the power 16 host in a network which would somewhere around 65536 if you talk about the class c it would be 256 which is simple calculation it is from 256 multiplied by 256 the second and the third sorry the third and the fourth octet this is from the second octet 256 multiplied by 256 multiplied by 256 or if you want you can also calculate it with the power 
as well it's completely your call how you want to calculate it now these many users can be added in one network but let's say we have a public ip from class a but we don't want but we don't have these many users right or let's say we have a ip from class c we have a network from class c but we have only 5 or 10 users which means we don't have 256 users as well so just to use only the required ip addresses and just to avoid the extra consumption or let's say wastage of the ip addresses we perform the subnetting in case of subnetting we add host bits into network bits and in case of super netting we add network bits into host bits simple as that in case of subnetting let me give you a simple example for that when we perform subnetting let's say the range is 192.168.128.0.0 up to 255 i'm just taking this one example from our second network here we also have the table so we can refer to this one suppose we want to perform subnetting on this particular network right the network address the same part for all the ip addresses is the initial three octets which is 192 168 128 these are the three octets right so this is the network part and the last octet which is 0 and it can reach up to 255 is the host part right so what we do we will take the binary bits we have 8 binary bits in the last one let me just give a space so we can better relate this it's quite compact here all right so we may no okay so we have 8 binary bits here one more okay so we have eight binary bits and just to represent how many number of binary bits are used for the network which is again the three octets how many number of binary bits are used for network we represent them as the CIDR this slash 24 is usually known as the CIDR which is again called as classless interdomain routing CIDR classless interdomain routing. The classless is a single word. Done. Interdomain. Okay. So this slash 24 is the CIDR value of this particular network. With the help of this CIDR, you can figure out how many number of binary bits are used for a network. And on the basis of this CIDR value, you can identify the actual network address and how many hosts it can accommodate. For example, if instead of these 24, I'm going to use this was my simple example here. So instead, instead of using the last full octet, suppose I'm only I don't have like 256 user. I only have let's say 10 or 15 users right so what I, I can do i can simply take up to 32 like within 32 like if i use the last four or let's say the last five or last six binary bits the maximum number of users i can accommodate is 2 raised to the power if i just put it here 2 raised to the power if i go with four binary bits if i'm only using last four binary bits i can use 16 ip addresses i can use 16 ip addresses for my machines within the network if i use the last five binary bits i can use 32 devices within the same network if my requirement is under 30 because we know two ip addresses will be consumed by the router one for the default gateway and one for the broadcast address so we have to keep the ip addresses under the control so if my consumption is under 30 i will only use the last five binary bits for the host and rest three of them will be passed to the network 
so instead of 24 it will increase to 27 here which will help them to create more networks for the environment right and only these last values will be used for the host address and in case of super netting we take ip addresses from the network part for example let's say instead of these 24 where we have these last 8 binary bits we can have 2 raised to the power 8 it means 256 users in the network and suppose i need somewhere around 300 users right so for that what i need is i need 44 more ip addresses and for that what i'll do is i'll take six more ip addresses from the third octet so instead of this 128 it will reduce to it will it will it, will, it can also be 128 as well but the cidr value will reduce to 18 that i'm only using the 18 initial binary bits for the network like i'm just taking this one as 11 for the network part and i'm using zeros for the host part so all those zeros will be used by the machine itself right if you want you can take more ip addresses as well but again if you only have 300 users you don't actually need these six binary bits all you need is just a single binary bit right because if you keep this binary bit as zero then you can have these 256 users and if you increase this one to one again you can have 256 users right in this manner you can have a total of 256 plus 256 a total of 512 users within the same network just by consuming one ip address from the host from the network address right so you don't actually need to take six out of them you just need one so it depends how many users you have and on the basis of that user base you can perform the subnetting and supernetting it's again depending on the requirements